against the home crowd. Carolina wearing the Stormtrooper white tonight. They'll kick it away to the Panthers. Kenny Johnson, one of the exciting freshmen from York, PA, is deep. And away we go from Pittsburgh tonight with the 17th meeting all time. Here is Johnson off the three. Keeps it toward the near side. He'll break the 20 and out to the 22. And here comes Pitt on the 20 yard return. And here is Pine Richland alum, Pittsburgh's own Phil Jerkovic. You know, Dracovic's a guy who, when he was you know, transferred from Notre Dame to Boston College, had an incredible season. A lot of people are talking about him as maybe leaving, maybe being a first-round draft pick, and it's been a struggle. He's missed some throws. He's struggled with accuracy. He's been hit a lot, and I think that needs to change to get him to play a little bit better. Pitt spreads the field, means Reynolds, Mumfield. And here's Dracovic. First down give is Rodney Hammond. He will cross the 25. On the first carry of the game, and Miles Murphy off that Tar Heel defense makes the stop on Hammond. 24th career game tonight for Hammond. 12 career touchdowns, 1,059 rush yards for the off injured young man out of Norfolk, Virginia. He's been injured, but he, I mean, everyone believes that he's a really good player. Very talented backfield here at Pitt a year ago. And he was in the lineup. I mean, they were trying to find ways to get him on the football field. Second down now. Dracovic under center. Another carry for Hampton straight ahead. And Cedric Gray will knock him down. Shy of the 29. And we get our first third down tonight. And Pitt is 41.5%, but just 9 of 27 in their last two games. The Panthers were 4 of 13 last Saturday night in Morgantown against the Mountaineers. Carolina defensively. Eighth in the league, 51st nationally. Opponents only hitting 36%. And Minnesota went 3 of 12 last Saturday in Chapel Hill. Bartholomew, the tight end, joins two receivers and a slot to the left. Mumfield to the bottom of the screen in motion now. Jerkovic's first throw of the night. Kanate Mumfield and a first down to the 38 yard line before Don Chapman. Maybe the most veteran piece of Mike Brown's secondary makes the play. That's what I mean about easy completion. Look, you motion into a stack release, and then Muckfield just comes in the wake of the release of the, the receiver in front of him. First and 10 now for Pittsburgh. Reynolds to the far side. This is mean zero and Mumfield to the near side. Here's Jakovic, a keeper. 45 midfield, takes a man, keeps his feet, and Phil Jakovic to the Carolina 42. And all of a sudden, the Boos have become waving pom poms, and the end zones are our left. And I think this is what everyone envisioned it would always be like. You know, it would be like since the moment he got here, and this is what he's able to do. He's a very good athlete. I said he's a a big, strong guy who runs well. And so keeping the ball on the backside of his own reads, taking off and running, you know, on a design pass, those are all things that he's done at a high level playing in this conference. Ball at the Carolina 42 after a 20-yard run by Dracovic. Pittsburgh on the opening drive of the game, and Hammond trying to get to the corner. Banged out of bounds. Gray was the first guy there, and then Cayman Rucker shoved him out. But Pitt, this doesn't look like the Panther offense of the last two weeks here in the opening drop. Uh, you, listen, they, the kids that get recruited here are tough. They're competitive. Yep. When I say tough, I mean physically tough, mentally tough. I think there's an element of when you're struggling and you feel like you're desperate, maybe a little bit more attention to detail. That's Bartholomew, the tight end. Hammond again running right at the Carolina front. Kevin Hester wraps him up, but that'll be enough to move the chains in a first down. You know, what's interesting, Wes, and we've seen it. We saw App State basically say, look, we want to line up and take it to you in the run game. We're, we're going to run at you. Really not what South Carolina did to North Carolina in the opener. I do think that that's something that, you know, Gene Chizik's got to see from his defense is when people want to line up and just try to hammer the football down our throat, can we hang in there? I think they feel like they can with the talent they have in their front. But so far, Pittsburgh having their way. Panthers have gone with a second tight end. Carter Johnson has come in. This is a sweep, and they're handing the ball to Kenny Johnson. This is the freshman who returned the kick a moment ago. He'll get nine on the sweep. 
Giovanni Biggers makes the tackle for Carolina. Boy, they really like Kenny Johnson, the MVP of the Big 33 game here in Pittsburgh, Tim. And that says all you need to know about how good Johnson is. Well, and when, they're, when you're a young player and they're putting plays in like that for you specifically, which they clearly are, tells you they like your speed. Yep. Second and short. Two tight end set stays. So 12 personnel here for Frank Signetti. Jakovic for Hammer. And Carolina wraps him up before I believe he got the first down mark. Miles Murphy, a senior from Dudley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Power Echoes, the linebacker from Charlotte, on the stop. You know, Pitt does a lot of kind of check with me stuff at the line of scrimmage. So Carolina stems, you know, as Jakovic gets into his cadence, causes a little bit of confusion up front for Pitt. Hammond's already got 18 yards on his first five carries. Third and one for the Panthers. Jakovic to throw. Reroute, and this is. Well, Hammond it is. Or Mumfield. Kanate Mumfield holds on to it. He'll pick up the first down at the 19. Yeah, and it's just man to man coverage. I believe this is an RPO. They got one call, but man to man coverage, and they just run a little pick right there. And because Mumfield is not down the field, he's actually behind the line of scrimmage, means can be blocking downfield, which essentially makes it a screen just out to the perimeter. Tenth play of the drive. Amari Gaynor has checked in. Carolina brings a third linebacker in now. First and ten, Jerkovic gets it to Johnson on the perimeter. Tries to cut it back in. There's Chapman making the hit on the first down play to the 15. So the Panthers have owned the clock. We've already played six minutes of this opening quarter at Akrasher in Pittsburgh. And Wes, it feels kind of like some body blows here, right? Inside, pound them inside, and then nope, we're gonna we're gonna spit it to the outside, and then punch you inside, and then spit it to the outside. A little bit of balance. And Mac Brown called this script yesterday when we visited with him. Called this exact script, didn't he? Carolina would have to match their physicality. Right now they have it. Carter Johnson, the tight end in motion. Another give. This is Hammond into a stack. And taken down at the 10. This Pittsburgh offensive line tonight, coached by the veteran Dave Borbley and under Frank Signetti's coordination. Jake Cradle is out. Matt Gonzalez is out. So they're going with a combination of Branson Taylor at left tackle, Ryan Bear, redshirt freshman at right tackle, Blake Zavovic with 19 starts. He's the most veteran piece at left guard. And now for the time being, Jason Collier Jr., a fifth year senior who's only played 24 games in the last two years off the bench, a former tight end, is playing the right guard spot. Fourth different offensive line in four games for Narduzzi's team. Third and short here for Pittsburgh. Jerkovic's been perfect and stays that way. The catch made by Mumfield knocked out of bounds, but it's enough for a first down, and it's first and goal inside Carolina's 10 at the 7. This is exactly what we saw on the third down. Now they're just taking the inside down because it's trips instead of just a twin set. Running a little pick, get to the perimeter, making an easy throw for Bill Jerkovic, and basically everything that Pitt wants to do right now, they're able to do with success. Pitt's one of the only 12 schools coming into the weekend who's perfect in the red zone. They're 10 for 10, seven touchdowns, three field goals in their first three games. Jerkovic hands, this is Hammond trying to scurry to the far side. His score standing. Just a clock drenching eight minute drive, Tim, to start the game for Pitt. A few reasons why that was huge for Pitt. One, you needed to get on track offensively. That felt like it was a get right drive for the Pitt Panthers. The other thing is this, Wes, as you mentioned the time. It's just a, that's time that you're not defending this explosive Carolina offense. Really, everything they wanted to do, they had. Ben Saul's point is good. Rodney Hammond's third rushing score of the year has given Pitt a 7-0 lead. Carolina gets the ball next.
play. Carolina will take over at its 25 after a 13 play 78 yard drive in 804. Rodney Hammond's touchdown now puts Drake May on the spot for his first possession Tim. Listen and Drake May is a great player. It's not any secret and. You know I think he's been under a little bit of. I don't want to say pressure but I think people have, the expectations are so high for him Wes that. Anytime there's a, a bad play, an interception, thing of that nature, people wonder, is he still that good? And the answer is he is. He's in a new offense, he's got a lot of control, and he's got a big challenge against this pit defense. Play fake to Hampton, pressure around him. May gonna scoot to his right, and he fumbled the ball. It is scooped up by Shane Simon. And Carolina's turnover has set up Pitt at the Tar Heel 16. Dayon Hayes. Knocked it loose. Now May litigates that he was throwing the ball. And I think he believes he was throwing the football, but it's going to look funny as he climbs in the pocket here, kind of jumps. And I believe he's he's trying to throw that football, but but Wes, I don't may agree. Like, doesn't look like much of a throwing motion. Stuart Mullins, no signal yet of a replay. Could be Booth initiated. Really on the previous play of a fumble, recovered by the defense, is under further review. So on Carolina's first snap of the ball game, Dayon Hayes knocked it loose. Shane Simon scoops it up. And we get a timeout. The field is that May's arm was going forward. And it's an incomplete pass, so Carolina will survive what would have been their first fumble of the year, Tim. Yeah, they survive it, and it certainly was an ugly looking play. And look, the ball's in his hands. It is moving forward. It does seem like he's trying to throw the football. I don't think it was that clear. Now, the question I would have should it have been ruled intentional grounding if that, in fact, was a pass? Because the ball doesn't make it to the line of scrimmage. There really wasn't anyone in sight. Hampton stays in the backfield with May. Carolina gets a second chance. Quick throw through the hands of Nate McCollum or Kobe Pacer, eight, not six for Carolina. It'll be third down and ten quickly on the Tar Heels opening possession and no huddle here. And Carolina wants to go fast on third down to prevent Pitt from getting a, you know, a sub defensive call in. Looks like Pitt was able to get one in. Got an overload blitz coming. Coming from Mays right, he'll shoot it back across the middle. Incomplete toward McCollum. There'll be a flag for pass interference here. Nate McCollum who caught 15 balls last Saturday against Minnesota, the intended receiver. Pass interference. Defense. The ball replaced at the spot of the foul with an automatic first down. They'll put it at the net at the 39. It'll be a 14 yard play. Well, it's clearly pass interference. I mean, he's there early, wrapping him up before the ball gets there. The amazing part to me is the flag comes from the sideline. Wes, <laughs> like, for a second, I'm looking deep for a flag. Didn't see one that comes from the sideline. Carolina, so much fortunate there. Here's Amari and Hampton's first carry of the night. He'll get a yard, maybe a yard and a half over the 40. All right, so Mac Brown talked yesterday about Pitt's physicality. You know, bullying, so to speak, that kind of thing, bringing that to the table for Carolina and his team. He challenged during the week to match it. Yeah, they need to match it, and it should be the identity of what they want to do on offense because they have these big physical backs. Hampton goes 220, British Brooks is 225, Caleb Hood 225. They should be physical as well. Second down, hand to Hampton, flag on the play as Omar and Hampton. Gets a yard. Offside against Pitt. Offside. Defense. Number zero. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's DeAndre Jules, who defensive coordinator Randy Bates said has had a terrific offseason and start to this season. Second down. And four and change for the first down. Just over the 45. May under duress again. He'll be sacked. And yes, taken down, and that's David Green. Big David Green, one of their captains, gets May on the ground with a speed rush of this pit front. 
Yeah, and if it wasn't going to be Green, it was going to be somebody else. Basically, everybody wins. Danielson wins. Green wins. It went off the edge. Hmm. Here's May keeping it on a third and long, and he will reach the 45 of Pitt and a first down. And that's what makes him so dangerous. He can attack every single area of the field because he's got a big arm and he sees it well. What surprises you is at 6'4", 230, Wes, he runs so well. 11-yard yep, run in the first down. Here's May, a little soft throw to the near side. Copenhagen the tight end, hurtled over in the 35, got knocked down. It was A.J. Woods, the corner, fifth-year senior for Pitt, the secondary, who made the play, and we've got a Panther player shaken up, and it's Green who had the sack a moment ago. It's an encouraging sign for Carolina to have Copenhagen Haver healthier with you know his hand not casted up and Drake May getting on the move. Seven nothing Pitt. Carolina driving when we come back. And so Carolina has the ball first and ten. Pitts 33. Seven nothing first Panthers. Season. British Brooks is coming to the game. May wants to throw a long shot far side, and that's caught J.J. Jones. His first grab of the night, and he'll back out of bounds for another North Carolina first down here. Yeah, and that was a much better job of Carolina picking up the pressure. It was a will free safety blitz, and they pick it up, which gives May enough time to shoot the ball outside. Chip Lindsey wasting no time. Here's May dumping it near side, and this is Morales, the tight end, took on two blockers. Keeps his feet, and it'll be first and goal. Carolina at Pitt's three-yard line. Kamari Morales, who had two catches a year ago against the Panthers in Chapel Hill, gets 12 there. It's the same exact play we saw to Copenhagen a few plays ago, and it gets Drake May on the move, which is something they want to do more of. British Brooks will get the carry on first and goal, and nowhere. Shane Simon or Brandon George, first guy through for the Panthers. One of those linebacking spots. We're not going to see Bengali Kamara, Shane Simon, Solomon DeShields. We'll probably see Kyle Lewis tonight, a redshirt freshman. We'll see Braylon Lovelace, 35 there. That's a freshman they're very excited about. Carolina's got a guy slow to his feet. And it looked like Monolus. And a official timeout here. So time for tonight's food lion, food for thought. And when you talk about the Tar Heels, Tim, and Pitt, we got to go back to the last two trips here. The one in 2019, Sam Howell throws. Looks like Carolina's going to win. They get this thing to overtime. And Pitt wins it in overtime, 34-27. Two years later, they're back here on a Thursday night. Remember, this is uh, this is Pitt now with Pickett trying to get to the ACC championship, right? And Carolina's in for the fight. And in overtime, Hal throws the interception to MJ Devonshire, and the rain starts. <laughs> Straight ahead, here's Hampton, touchdown Carolina. Second effort of Amari and Hampton. Puts the Tar Heels in the end zone on their opening drive tonight. Pretty good response by Carolina. And that's a heck of a run by Amari and Hampton. You know, a lot of times down in, down on the, around the goal line, the backs kind of look like they close their eyes and just try to pound it up in there. It's a pretty nice cut by Hampton on his way into the end zone. Ten plays, 75 yards, three minutes and 18 seconds on a drive that almost wasn't. Hampton gets a gets the touchdown, and for Amari and Hampton, it is his seventh rushing score of the year. Noah Burnett's point. He is good. Well, Mac Brown's team responds, Tim. Yeah, they respond exactly right. A little bit of misdirection in the backfield. That's what I mean about that cut. He's able to kind of work his way back, and McIntyre kind of filling up in there. Misses him. And Wes, you're exactly right when you think about the drive almost didn't get going. Yep. Because the pass interference, which extended the drive, and that changed everything. Sure did. Amari and Hampton rewarded. Drake May was three for five for 46 yards on the drive. So both quarterbacks off the nice starts. And one thing I've noticed about Mac Brown since coming back to Carolina in 2019, doing a lot of note taking. Doing a lot of note taking. He was, tell you what, we, we had a 
great visit yesterday with Pat Narduzzi, his staff, and then late yesterday afternoon with Mac Brown, Gene Chiswick, and Chip Lindsey on a lot of topics. <laughs> and it was wide-ranging and interesting, all of them. Really enjoyed our time with both staff. And I think one of the things that was so remarkable about Mac is he was very clear about the real talk that he was giving his football team basically saying look you got to separate yourself from some of these Carolina teams in the past that haven't been able to get to this 4 and 0. Let's go to Taylor. She's with a all time Panther great. Yeah guys as the Panthers take the field right now you can't think of pit football without this guy Larry Fitzgerald officially inducted into the pit hall of fame this weekend. You've had a heck of a career. Where does this honor rank for you very, at the very top you know to be able to be in uh, you look at you know Mark May and Jimbo Covert and Bill Fralick and Mike Dicka and Hugh Green and Tony Dorsett. I mean, like you just the names go on and on. And uh, to be, you know, in that list of, of great players and contributors to the university, it means a lot. And uh, I've had an unbelievable weekend and being able to speak with the team and be around the guys and, you know, being in that uh, team meeting and getting a chance to talk to them, looking in their eyes and seeing that passion and desire to go out here and execute is uh, it's wonderful. Bill Jakovic came out pretty hot on that first drive. You did talk to them in the locker room. What was your message? Well, just, just play within yourselves. I mean, this is a long game. But there's no one play that's going to make the difference in this game, right? Just so being consistent, blocking, tackling, catching the ball when it's thrown to you. You know, doing the basics, you know. And at, and at the end of the day, there's going to be like five plays that are going to make up the difference in this game. Make sure you're, you're one of the contributors that are making those five plays. I love watching you on the sideline. Everyone's coming up to you, taking pictures. You're so gracious with your time. You come back here. There's a lot of familiar faces. Who are some of those faces that you've been excited to see this week? Well, this is one former teammate, Chris, Chris Wilson. I got, you know, a bunch of guys up in the, in the box. I'm going to go spend the rest of the game with after the second quarter um, and it's not even just the players but the administration the faculty the staff you know so many people touch my life in a really meaningful way and um, to be able to come here and, and thank them you know that, that's what I really enjoyed about this weekend that people like they turned up and showed up and I got a chance to look them in the eyes and tell them thank you um, and I think I, the, that that's to be the biggest takeaway I had from this weekend well deserved honor Larry thank, thank you, thank you. Very much I appreciate it thank you Taylor thank you well, we could sit and watch this reel all night, couldn't we, Tim? I'm going to tell you, he's got the opportunity to be teammates with him with the Arizona Cardinals, and Mark as good of a player as he was, just an outstanding teammate, outstanding guy, and obviously outstanding representative of this or this university. Absolutely. Here's a little bubble inside, and Carolina rallies to the throw to Mumphy. I'll tell you this, it is a short list with Larry Fitzgerald on it. Look at just the college numbers. I think there's a lot of people that believe that he's maybe the best hands of anyone that's played in the NFL before. I mean, some people that, that feel that way. And what's funny about that is, like, a lot of times, because the guy's hands are gigantic. And it's like, yeah, he, he just, that's how he could one hand catch it. That wasn't, it's not why it was the case for Larry. Yeah. Taylor, he'll have to come back here one day to go about 90 minutes from here to get fitted for the gold jacket in Canton. There's a, a little screen again. Boy, the flat. Tim, what's happened here strategically? Jerkovic has found a lot of money in these little throws to the flat, right? He has. And, and listen, it hasn't just been by throwing it there. You think about where he's run with the football when he's kept it. Mm -hmm. One on the first drive, one on this drive as well. Definitely an area of the field that they're attacking. And I think an element of it is because, well, Carolina does not want you to be able to run the football on them inside. Pitt is always looking for an extra gap. It's one of the reasons why they play so many tight ends, just looking for that extra gap in the run game. Five for five is Dracovic, 26 yards, first and 10 for the Panthers. Here's Hammond through the middle of the Carolina defense into the Tar Heel secondary to the 31. Tayon Holloway might have saved a touchdown for Rodney Hammond Jr. And we've seen this misdirection run a few times. You see Dracovic come out, extend the football to the right, and it's a bit of a wind back run to get the linebackers flowing to help set up the blocks of those guards as they get to the second level. And feels like the pit offense has certainly found something. 23 yard run for Hammond. You see nine for 55 here in the opening quarter. We're in the final half minute of it. First and ten, play fake Jerkovic. Going to set his feet and launch for Bartholomew, who makes the catch. Out of bounds at the one is the big man from Blue Mountain. And one of the things Frank Signetti said was the guys around the quarterback have a lot of confidence in this pit offense right now. 
High formation on first and goal to go. And straight through goes Daniel Carter for the touchdown. Shows you what a difference a week can make, Tim. They only had 211 yards last Saturday night at Morgantown. This is 154 now in the first quarter and change. And so much of it, there was talk about, hey, why aren't they running the football? Look at the movement. The offensive line gets there as Daniel Carter really ends up having a pretty easy path to the end zone. Here's the point from Sauls. And it's a touchdown lead again for the Panthers and a moment ago, Taylor visited with Pat Narduzzi. Coach, your offense on fire coming out of the locker room, uh, scoring on the first drive. What have you liked from Phil Jerkovic in that unit? You know what, I don't know if he's throwing an incomplete pass. That's the first thing I like. Um, again, like I said, we got to trust him. We got to do it for four quarters, though. One quarter ain't getting it done, so we got to continue to do what we're doing. Pressure on Drake May. Uh, they were able to score. What more do you want to see from that side of the ball? You know, I'd like to see a turnover on the first play of the game, but you know they didn't give us that. So we just got to keep plugging away. Uh, he made some plays, and we got we got to get him in the pocket. We've had times to get him, we didn't get him. We got to we got to finish it in the, in the backfield. Thank you, coach. Thanks. Ever the litigator, Pat Narduzzi. You know, when you think about having Drake in the pocket. Look, they sacked him once. They yep. they had a play where it was initially ruled a fumble. I mean, we've had a few things that, you know, that have happened, you know, prior to that long Carolina drive that right. could have been a three and out. All right. To the point, though, this quarterback is six for six for 56 yards. He was three for three on the drive, including the big throw to Bartholomew to set up the one yard score for Carter. And there's basically been one big throw. That's the throw. Great adjustment by Bartholomew to make the play. Otherwise, it probably ends up being a really bad feeling of having a wide open tight end and missing him. So that's guys around the quarterback playing better. And then that's Frank Signetti doing a better job of finding him easy completion. Stuff in the flat where it's basically give it to that guy or take off and run. Petaway touches a knee. Carolina will start from its 25-yard line. Don't forget, oh, the gang's all here. We had, a, we had like a big team meeting late this afternoon with Kelsey Riggs and Emac and E.J. Manuel. Coach Rick, and of course Eddie Royal, ACC Huddle Post Game tonight from Acrisure Stadium. All the highlights, all the analysis, live guests, and more. I didn't, coming re up. I didn't realize they had the setup like that. I mean, they had like it's like a sports bar. They had all the TVs in there. They have like a catered event for them. I mean, kind of held out on us at Clemson last week, don't you think? Seriously. Yeah. I want an invite next time. Yeah. Well, kind of storm. We kind of. Kind of charged the party. We did okay. Here's British Brooks on the first down play for Carolina for a couple of yards. All right, Tim, at some point, the game temperament changes here, right? And who does that favor? Does that favor Carolina? Are you saying it's going to slow down? I mean, I'm not sure. You know, the pace Carolina wants to operate. And, look, and, I, and I think that what you're going to get here is you're going to get a pit defense that just stays aggressive. And so if they're going to stay aggressive, then Carolina will end up taking shots. Well, here's a third down and eight after the miss by May looking for Copenhagen. You got to get David Green off the field. Carolina was trying to quicken the tempo, but they subbed and that allowed Green to come off. See Nesbitt, the tight end, in motion for the Tar Heels. May the snap. Pitt brings four. Drake from the pocket resets. Now moves to his left, trying to get rid of it. Cannot. Devin Danielson had some help from Tyler Bentley. And that's a really encouraging sign for Pitt. They show an overload blitz. They end up just rushing four, three defensive linemen, and then they end up, you know, wrapping a linebacker around. They end up getting home because May's looking for his check down, but the check down gets bumped on the way out, and he's stuck holding the football. There's been a bit of confusion on some of those third downs, which is why Chip Lindsey wanted to go quickly on third down. Ben Kiernan to punt it away. MJ Devonshire, very dangerous. There is a flag as Kiernan offers the punt to Devonshire. He will scoop it up at the 27. Flag thrown there. 
And Elijah Huzzy leads the tackle parade for Carolina. 51 yard pump, but we got flags at either end of the play. Stuart Mullins already pretty busy tonight in this first quarter in change. Illegal shift on Carolina, blocking the back on Pitt. So that's Andre Powell who coordinates all the special teams for Pitt. Larry Porter is in charge of that discipline for Carolina. The so referee Mullins. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Illegal shift, kicking team. Doing the return, illegal block in the back. Number 10, receiving team. The foul's offset. Replay, fourth down. So everybody will work their way back down to our left. And Coach Narduzzi, not exactly cheery about something there. So now, Kieran and, and Devonshire now has only had eight returns this year for a 3.3 average, Tim. But this is a guy capable of taking it all the way back. He had an 81 yarder a year ago against Rhode Island. And here is the Irishman, Kieran, to punt it away. Carolina has two gunners you see to the bottom. And now Kiernan kicks it over Devonshire's head and he will pick it up. 10 looking for a cutback 20 MJ 25 30 and there you go. Got to be careful 54 59 yard punt for Kiernan. Longest of the year, 11 yard return, hit by touchdown. Completion to start the game, and a couple more into the flat, and then hard play action, shot downfield to Bartholomew, who makes a great adjustment to the football. First and 10, this is Rodney Hammond. He'll pick up about three through the middle of the Carolina line to the 32 and a half. Came in Rucker to stop for Carolina on the junior from Norfolk, Rodney Hammond. 10 carries 58 yards so far. Wes, I don't think it could be a better start for Phil Jacoby. I agree. Yeah. You know, they, they announced his name. There were boos in the stadium. Yes. You know, and that's certainly not how anyone envisioned this playing out. And he hasn't given them a single thing to be unhappy about. Play fake. Fires Mumfield. Panate tried to make a man miss. That was Gainer, I think, in space. The Florida State transfer. It makes a stop. So third down coming up. But again, it's a play action, move the pocket, easy completion right in front of you on the boot. I mean, basically saying, look, this is how we're going to get you going. And then, look, you need to do something later where you're in a straight drop back situation, fine. But it would not surprise me here because of how they've done this on third and six if it's a relatively conservative call in terms of what they asked the quarterback to do. Pittsburgh three for three. Panthers came in at 41 and a half percent, but just nine of their last 27. Flag thrown and first penalty of the night. On the pit offense, I believe. Full start. Full start. Offense. There was no time when all the 11 players were set before the snap. Five yard penalty. Third down. Tim, I want to go back to Jacoby for a moment. He played a long time. You've had the hard week like Phil Dracovic has had. What part mentally has he had to deal with in the mirror in addition to all the coaches and everybody else, teammates, that, that part of the equation? I think the thing that's probably been, I would guess, is the biggest struggle is look, there was a period in time where he was talked about. Mel Kuyper's boards got him as a top sure. five quarterback. And now, you know, I think there's rumors of like, hey, are they, they close to giving him the hook because the offense is struggling? Jacoby flushed to his right, and he's just going to throw this out of bounds smartly. Flushed out by Cayman Rucker. 
but that will end the possession for Pittsburgh. And Wes, I, th I think that's the, you know, that's a challenge I think for for any quarterback. It's never always going to be perfect. It's, you're never always going to have a stretch where you only play well. You know, L listen, the 28 to three game, you know, Patriots and Falcons happens yeah. because Tom Brady throws an interception yeah, that goes back the other way. Defenders. Like every quarterback faces adversity, and how you, and sometimes you know, some guys more than others, how you pull yourself out of it, I think says more about who you are as a quarterback. Three and out for Pitt. So here is Caleb Junko, a legacy if there ever was one here, punting it away to Elijah Huzzy. At the 21, here's Huzzy. Got a block back to the near side, 30, 35. No flag thrown there on the block, and out of bounds at midfield goes Elijah Huzzy. Pretty good return by the transfer from East Tennessee State, 29 yards. It's his best of the year, Carolina's best of the year. Timeout on the field, hit by a touchdown, Drake May next. Before night, you saw Carolina trailing going to the fourth in the last 17.45 of the game. He showed you why he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. A young player gets a good defense. Defense that throws a lot out you, at you to throw it that many times. They'll be standing making plays at the end of the game is impressive. Yep. Carolina won 42 to 24. It's the only double digit game in the last 11. Here's a double reverse and May trying to find Copenhaver again. He's wide open and caught down to the 10. A.J. Woods a saving tackle and May is down and a flag has been thrown. Two flags have been thrown. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 50. Wow. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the play. First down. Dayon Hayes. And Drake May shakes off. Football trainer Luke Ross. Well, obviously, you know, run the reverse. They flip it back, kind of a flea flicker, and then he gets hit up high. As he's able to get the ball out, just kind of gather it. It doesn't even have the laces. Obviously, the hands up in the face, and may slow to get up. In fact, I, I think because the trainers initially came yeah. out to see him, even though there's a penalty, Connor Harrell's got to come into the football game now. 40-yard throw. Copenhagen, they add half the distance, so first and goal at the five. And here is Connor Harrell, the redshirt freshman, Alabaster, Alabama. A two-time state champion going to work. British Brooks right side. Bangs away and will be knocked down at the one. Second and goal there, Solomon DeShields to stop. Yeah, and I hope that it's coming across on TV, but the reality is that there are some pads clacking tonight. Yeah. They're trying to get somebody off the field. Carolina did not substitute. It was Danielson trying to skate off, and Pat Narduzzi had to call timeout. Timeout. Pittsburgh. And Tim, this was part of Carolina's plan. Well, and there's a lot going on there. Timeout. Drake May was planning on coming back out on the field, and because of that, they thought they could sub, and then they end up having to burn a timeout. So timeout, almost five minutes in, second quarter, 14-7 in favor of Pitt. You know, that, that, that's a very interesting scenario. Starting quarterback is, is out of the game because he has to be. He thinks he's coming back in. That tells the defense, all right, we're going to be able to sub. Then to change your mind, try to quick snap him, the offense does, and catch the defense on the field and forces Pitt to take a timeout. And I, and I think that Pitt's unhappy with how that all went down. Yep. So second down and goal. Brooks and Hampton in the package here, and both in the backfield. Mays returned. They'll hand it to Marion Hampton. And Carolina says he's in. The officials have said he was stopped. Another look. Basically just wedge blocking, simple dive play, and Hampton's met well beyond the goal line, and I don't believe he gets in. 
So third and goal. To me, this is where that, that Philadelphia push comes in with this quarterback and big backs behind him. May going to hand it to British Brooks, and he got knocked down. Pitch shut the door again. Terrific stand. DeAndre Jules and Donovan McMillan. He tries to go over the top. There's just not enough movement. You know, in order to go over the top, Hard from that offset back position. Kind of need to be in the home position and hitting it downhill. Carolina two for four on fourth down this year. Fourth and goal. May to his left. Looks and he scores. He looked up as if he might throw it and then just scored it on the ground. Wes, you're exactly right. That was a design pass play. It was just a move the pocket pass play anticipating all-out blitz so you're going to run away from the free blitzer they move him left and really they have pace for right away but he didn't feel like he needed to throw it because they do such a good job of blocking the edge he's able to walk in for an easy score one yard run by drake may his second rushing score of the year the huzzy punt sets up a five play 50 yard drive in two minutes and Burnett squeezes in the point inside the right upright. Well, we're locked up again, Mr. Hasselbeck. Wes, you thought it might slow down. No chance. If it is, it's not in this half. Carolina, Pittsburgh tied at 14. Tim Hasselbeck, Tyler Tannenbaum, Wes Durham. Great to have Joe McCoy filling in, producing the show tonight. Right? Yeah. Charlie Reynolds directing. Good to have you fellas in. They came through the portal. Help us out this hey, week. Listen, yeah. everyone's working the portal. We're, we're not above working the portal. No, we're not. Look forward to having out. We, hey, we just don't want to end up in the portal. That's exactly <laughs> right. Kenny Johnson will watch it go through the end zone. Alex Farmertino, Bob Fratteroli will be back with us next Saturday night. Speaking of Alex, here's his favorite segment of the broadcast every week. You got to get that drive recap going. New York yeah. Life drive recap. Well done, Tim. That's exactly right. It was Elijah Hussey, Carolina's best punt return of the year. In fact, their first punt return of the year. Yeah, and they really like Hussey. He's played well on defense. That was a big punt return. Then, obviously, the trick play. Drake May does a good job of standing in there, getting the ball out to Copenhaver. And after a few unsuccessful tries, Drake May able to find pay dirt by running it in. So Pitt from its 25. Jerkovic a keeper. This time to try and start, but cannot run away from Cedric Gray. Gavin Bartholomew is out there trying to help. And 33 in the white, along with his buddy Power Eccles, having none of it, lost a two. Hey, that's exactly right. Power Eccles does a great job of stringing this out. You see him, he kind of wraps over the top, strings it out, and that allows Cedric Gray to run him down. and. That to me is a Gene Chizik adjustment of wrapping the linebacker over the top after Phil Dracovic has come out the back door a few times on that run. You see the tight end, two receivers to the bottom of the screen. Dracovic to throw and a sliding catch. It's ruled incomplete for Rodney Hammond, who's been on the field, Tim, for every snap of this first half. Well, and Wes, I think it was one of the things you were somewhat curious about is do we need to see more of him, right? He's yeah. been such a good player. You referenced earlier his injury history, but he's healthy now. And I get it. There are other good backs here. You know, Flemister's a good back. Daniel Carter, we saw him with the score earlier. But it feels like Hammond. This has a, been a, a school that's had a lot of really good running backs in mm -hmm. their program. And, Hammond, I think, is a guy that they feel like has got plenty of ability. They had the ACC's best a year ago, Israel Abanacanda, who's now a member of the Jets, of course. Third down in the dozen for Jakovic on a straight drop. Here comes Rucker with the pressure, and Jakovic will be sacked back at the one by Cayman Rucker, who lit up Charlotte on opening night three weeks ago, and now post his third sack of the year. And everything about this was off. I, I think they're early. I, I, I believe that it was a false start by Branson Taylor, the left tackle. And I think that caused a little bit of confusion. And then Rucker, who's been outstanding this season, just able to stay on his rush and get to Dracovic.
So Elijah Huzzy stands in pit territory at the 48. Waiting on Junko's punt. He got it away through a, a, a fray of arms, I think. Here is Huzzy from the 48 of Carolina. Elijah Huzzy, 35, 30. Huzzy, 15, 10, 5. Carolina leads. 52 yard punt return for Elijah Huzzy. Speaking of the portal, what a find this kid's been. <laughs> he certainly has been. It was a low kick, and because of that, he had a chance for the return. Obviously, gets it around midfield, and then, you know, the last return went to the right. He winds this one back, picks up a good block by DJ Jones, and, you know, Huzzy's a guy that, as we've met with Mac Brown and his staff, they have raved about him. Basically saying he's been everything they thought he'd be great instincts great football player and he's shown it in the return game My goodness in the span of about a minute and 40 seconds Carolina has scored two touchdowns One to tie the game and now the huzzy punt return to take the lead Don't forget Tuesday night on ACC Network. Nothing but net takes a look at every ACC school. Pitt had two drives to start the game. 20 plays, 153 yards. Their last two drives, Tim, half dozen plays, minus 24. Yeah, and unfortunately for Pitt offensively, it just was a bizarre play that really should have been whistled dead because Taylor, the left tackle, goes early. Instead, it ends up being a sack. Hunter's, you know, heels on the back end line. Low kick returns to a, you know, return for a score. And, you know, it's those little details that end up getting you. Kick through the end zone from Boyd. So Pitt is back out. Drakovic, who's having a pretty good night, seven of nine, 57 yards. Trying to see if he can relight it a little bit here. Really, I think he's made good decisions. I think Frank Signetti Jr. has done a great job of getting him easy completion stuff out in front of him. The one, it, the one ball down the field was the Bartholomew catch that set up Carter's touchdown. Yeah, I mean, everything else has been relatively easy for him, which I think is what the plan was. And I would say that the plan's been executed. Panthers have gone a touchdown up to a touchdown back. And Hammond back to the line of scrimmage. Gray and then Gaynor and Power Eccles. You know, and, they, and that misdirection run, which certainly got the linebackers to flow and there were some seams created, seems like it's being played a little bit better by Cedric Gray and Power Eccles. like a pretty important for a team that was kind of questioning itself the last couple of weeks. We've got up to a good start here tonight. Feels like Narduzzi's team needs to close here strong at the end of the half. Here's Dracovic cutting it loose and caught. What a catch. Karate Mumfield and a first down near midfield. And it's a really nice job by Phil Dracovic because off of the hard play action, Desmond Evans is right in his face. And so Dracovic makes this throw under all kinds of pressure. I mean, basically getting hit as he's following through, and that's the second big throw, and probably feel like you can kind of trust your quarterback now. First and 10, out at the 47. Three tight ends now. Play fake Dracovic. Over the top, Bartholomew caught it and held on at the Carolina 25. Took a big lick from Will Hardy, but Gavin Bartholomew, another big play. In a very similar route, they try to leak him across. You see what happens, see him kind of hide in there and then turn up the sideline. Dracovic hit again, and I think that Will Hardy kind of gets caught in between. Do I play the football or do I go for the hit? Pitch subs, so Carolina's making some subs. Boy, Stuart Mullins and his crew really having to watch the sidelines here tonight, too. Maybe more so than normal for this ACC crew. First down give. This is Hammond. He'll get a couple. 
Let's visit with Tyler Tannenbaum. Yeah, you guys are watching Phil Dracovic hang back there in the pocket and take hits while also completing passes. Well, this week at practice, they upped the tempo a little bit more, and Pat Narduzzi decided to simulate pressure in practice, bringing scout DBs into Phil Dracovic's space, yelling, screaming, distracting him so that maybe they can make some changes during game time and complete some of those big throws. He wasn't sure if it would pay off, Coach said. He said maybe some quarterback gurus would think we're crazy, uh, but it looks like it's paying off pretty well so far, guys. Well. The throw to Mumfield against the pressure from Evans was that example number one for sure. Second down. Dracovic flips it here to the near side, and that's trouble. Hammond was trapped on a shoot top tackle by Power Eccles. And the play goes back to the 26. Yeah, I would say this about Dracovic, having seen him play plenty of football now. He's not afraid to stand in there, make a throw and get hit. I mean, he's a tough kid. Remember the, you know, when he really had his first big year at Boston College, the comparisons were to a guy that played in this building. It was Ben Roethlisberger. It was, look at how he stands in the pocket, can get guys off him. He's willing to, to take a hit in the pocket. And that really is how people talked about Phil Dracovic's game. Sebo Flemister has now come in the ball game. And now another pit timeout. 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 Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. They're second and a half. 30 seconds. 30 so a touchdown lead for Carolina. 3:47 to go. Pitt will have one timeout to go. The point here for Narduzzi was, and, and Tim, we touched on this earlier. Your quarterback had to get had to get right yeah. in a lot of ways. Okay, the game plan pretty solid here tonight. Get it on the perimeter. Run it with Hammond. Done some right things. But there's a, how many times do we say this? And we heard it from Larry Fitzgerald. Five plays in a ball game, yeah. right? Called gap plays, GAP, game altering plays. Yep. You don't know when they happen, but when they do, they're going to determine the outcome of the game. And there's usually only a handful of them. And you don't know when they happen, and you don't know who's going to be asked to make the play. That, I mean, that's just that's how this works, especially in games that are closely contested. And you know, you know, it's not lopsided with one team being significantly better than the other, which I think ultimately is the case tonight. Well, and Jerkovic, after having a couple three and outs, Carolina used it. They got the Hussey pump return. He had to make plays, and he's done it in this drive. Yeah, he has. Under pressure with Dev Desmond Evans in his face. Good adjustment by Mumfield. Then again, because Cedric Gray's in his face to Bartholomew. Here's Jerkovic out of the timeout. He tried to go up the ladder from Mumfield again. Broken up. Murphy was pressuring. And as we talk about the pressure, I think that goes hand in hand with Marcus Allen making a play. That's something that Gene Chizik talked to us about. With that ball not perfectly accurate, in part because of the pressure and because of that, Marcus Allen able to get his hand in there and swipe it away. And I think it's a good example of the pass rush marrying the coverage to be able to get a stop on third down. 44 yard try for Ben Sauls, who's only missed twice in his last 20 tries. Once against Cincinnati this year, last year at Virginia from 54, and he drives this one through. With 3.38 to play, a four point lead for Carolina. Tar Heels will have the ball, perhaps to close the half, leading four when we come back. Insurance halftime report. Myself, Eddie, Emac, AEJ. Definitely going to be talking about this hot start for Pitt. What do they need to do to keep it going? Stay the course. Don't panic. Continue to run the football. Keep Gavin Bartholomew in the game plan. And keep it rolling in the second half. Wes and Tim, we like the start. We'll see you at the half with more. Thank you. Great to be with you guys in the Steel City on Saturday night. Saul's a driving kick toward Petway, who will play it from the goal line. 20 for Petway and no more. Panthers rally right there. There's a flag thrown from over here in front of the Carolina bench. So let's see what we got there. We got guys falling back off the pile. <laughs> let's see what we have here. We got one marker, I believe. That's it. Yep. All the other histrionics went on flat. <laughs> so ball is at the 21 for the moment. Stuart Mullins has been busy. During the return. Illegal block in the back. He's 17. Number 21. Half of this is to the goal. First down. Tim, I had a coach tell me a couple of years ago, America's penalty. The block in the back. I mean, 
You watch him. Like, it is. It really is. <laughs> that or that or PI on third down in the NFL. Both of the two. Oh, <laughs> nicely done. Carolina's first penalty of the night will put the ball to Tar Heel nine. Mac Brown has all three timeouts, 3.31 to go, and Drake May on a four of seven night here in the first half passing. British Brooks will be with him in the backfield. Here come the Panthers. May got to cut it loose, cannot, he's sacked back at the two. Off the bottom of the stack comes the new number eight, Samuel Okanlola. Listen, it feels like a bit of confusion in the pocket for Drake May. You know, do a lot of these simulated blitzes. You know, they'll, they'll show one side, they'll come from another, and I feel like Drake has been stuck holding the football a few times with the pressure coming. By the way, the old number eight was the ACC's defensive player of the year a season ago, Kalaja Kansi. British Brooks, a flag has been thrown from behind the play some 25 yards off the snap. It's, tw it's 12 men because they, they try another substitution. On Pitt? On Pitt and Pat Narduzzi not happy about it. Javon McIntyre was shaken up on the play. He's gone down so that uh, Pitt football trainer Chris Hanks can come out for a visit. And here's Stuart Mullins. Illegal substitution. 12 players on defense. Five yard penalty. Second half. Down stays. And I think the confusion was there was a substitution, but then there was another substitution. And I think when that happens, you are supposed to hold it a second time. Like this substitution just happened. Now you have to hold it. Allow the defense to sub. And if they were to sub again, you gotta hold it again. Hampton has come in with May. A two-by-two two look here with Bryson Nesbitt, one of the tight ends in the slot left. That's Nesbitt in motion. May gonna get it to Hampton, got a block on the edge. 15-20. Hampton keeps his feet and then took a massive lick. It'll be a first down out at the 25. The hit by the former Gator Donovan McMillan and now a flag on the hit, I believe. You know, it's going to be interesting. I'm not sure if it's on the hit or if it's on the celebration or reaction after the hit. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number three, 15 yard penalty, first down. 21 yard throw from May to Hampton. Listen, it's a massive hit by McMillan, and then it's that get up and, and flex on top of him, talk to him, that draws the play. Looks a great play, and then makes a play that costs his football team. McMillan had 18 tackles last Saturday night in Morgantown to lead Pitt, most by. A player since 2018. Here's May shooting it downfield, caught in stride, and that's Nate McCollum from Dutchtown in Atlanta. McCollum has quickly turned the field on a nice throw by Drake May at 29 yards. Yeah, great anticipation by May. This ball comes out early. Defenders' heads turned. That means he's open, and this goes right by the ear of McIntyre, who's trailing McCollum, and McCollum. A burst onto the scene last week. Boy, oh, sure did. Lappy makes the tackle of Bay, who had a keeper for a couple here. Under, under two now to go, but Mac Brown has all three of his Carolina timeouts plus Tim. They get the ball to start second half. Pistol set here for May. It's JJ Jones in motion, bottom of the screen. May up in the pocket. He'll run for it here. Gets the first down. 15. He'll slide. Shy of the 10, they'll mark it to the 12. He's got such a great feel of when to take off and do that. And, and his ability to shoot the ball down the field, but then also make you pay 
so good, and then a much better job of getting down and avoiding the hit. 15 yard run. Here's Hampton inside the 10 with about 80 seconds to go. And I think it's an element for Carolina here where we've got to pit defender down. There doesn't need to be a rush. And then getting the ball in the second half and with a minute 11 left and timeouts, you don't need to be in a hurry. We've talked what we've learned about Phil Jerkovic in this first half, Tim. Carolina. There's been, I think sometimes from some of these Tar Heel teams. You know, Georgia Tech, was that two years ago? Game. Yeah, Jeff Sims rushes for about 200 yards, and you thought, well, they're going to have an answer for Sims. About how Pitt ran the opening drive. Then the next drive, ball. Then there was a, an answer, a response. I think Mac Brown probably has to be pleased with it. Hey, don't forget, every Friday, ACC campus, the Pac Man is here. All with the, the hub joined by some special as well. Friday afternoon. See a pit football team. Yep. Good linebackers. You hit corners and safeties and that are <laughs> tough, gritty football players. It's also like it didn't just start. No, it didn't. Devin Brown is part of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> You, you have some flashbacks. When you're, when you're here and you see the pictures on the wall. May in the gun. Second down and four. Gonna keep. Got to throw. And oh my goodness, he threw it to the end zone and it's caught for the touchdown by Pesor and he threw it left handed. What in the world? This is what I mean about this kid. It's a, it's a zone read, basically. They, they don't block the edge. And this is Patrick Mahomes stuff. This is, we're throwing the ball left-handed. Nate Temple had direct. Not Mac Brown's first rodeo. Out. North Carolina. Our first and a half. We're going to call, it, we're gonna call one of our three here, Tim, and talk about it. And do you take a lot of time on the tee box, Wes? No, sir. I have a goal every time playing sub four, if you really want to know. So if somebody slowed you down just a little bit. Yeah, it bothers you. you. It made you. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, would you? Hey, you want to use this tee instead, Wes? <laughs> how would you feel about it? I probably wouldn't like it much. How's that? Think that's how Sauls feels? I don't know. It's a good question. Here's the thing about Sauls. I told you the field goal he hit earlier is his 19th in his last 21. This guy's been pretty steady, but he missed a 42 yarder two weeks ago here against Cincinnati and a 54 yarder at Virginia. That's it. The rest of it's been pretty good. This would be record book tying good. 58. Huzzy stands at the end line. The kick is on the way. It's going to be short. And here's Elijah Huzzy five yards deep. Now Huzzy at the 10. And he will run out of bounds to end the half. There wasn't a lot in that. And that will take us to the break. 28. And winning those first five minutes, he expressed the importance of extending the lead, guys, because it would force Pitt to pass the ball with Bayer now at quarterback. George Petway signals for the fair catch. And Carolina, who only ended up with four offensive possessions in the first half, three were touchdowns, gets the ball at its 25 to start period three. You know, Mac talks about, you know, this middle portion of the game. It's something he's always preached. You know, we, you know, when we get to visit with him, I don't know how he can kind of see the game happen. He's had been in a lot of these. Yeah. Kind of has an expectation for how the game will go in managing it, like he did at the end of the half, and then. Obviously, to get the ball back here is part of it. Drake May got roughed up a little bit in the first half, too, but not to the extent where he is out of the game. Here's a Marion Hampton pushing the stack for about three on the first snap. And Solomon to Shields. 
was the first guy in a blue jersey to reach Amari and Hampton. In three, second down, seven. Carolina with tempo, no huddle set. Chip Lindsey is starting to get a rhythm for his offensive too. They said, oh, look at this deep ball shot for J.J. Jones and caught in stride is Jones. And then it's Devonshire that was with him, but a terrific throw by May. It's a terrific throw, and I think he's trying to work an option route that's underneath, and he sees it late, see him kind of scanning, almost going to escape outside the pocket. And then it's the accuracy on the reset that's so impressive for 52 yards. Handoff for Hampton. Nothing there. Catch by Jones, who had a big one in the first half. Is 11th and 12th grams of the year. JJ clearly not full speed as he comes off hobbling. Christian Hamilton has come in. 5'11 freshman from just outside of Charlotte at Harrisburg, North Carolina. That's Nesbitt in motion. Here's May moving the pocket to his right. He will shoot it and Nesbitt will catch it. And nope, incomplete is the rule. 13 yard line. And now to be third in the full 10. And we've got a pit player shaking up on the play. And that is DeAndre Jules, the defensive lineman. So we will step aside there. J.J. Jones, big catch, 52 yards, has set Carolina up. The third down is Winston Salem. Here's Hampton around the corner, leaning and knocked out of bounds around the five. But boy, Amari and Hampton showing us some of what he showed us two weeks ago against Appalachian Town. Yeah, and a little more speed. Just gives you a little Statue of Liberty play type of feel with the, with the ball handling back there. I think it's his speed to the edge that's a little bit surprising at times with, with as big of a back as he is. The true freshman, Braylon Lovelace from Leechburg, Pennsylvania. Got a fistful of Amari and Hampton. First and goal, inside goes Hampton and to the doorstep, brought down at the one. See, that's what you're you know, typically seeing out of him and John Copenhaver doing a good job blocking. Here they go, Carolina gonna quick snap it, hand it to Hampton and he will roll into the end zone, but he's already been ruled down on the tackle from Solomon to Shields. Be interesting. I'm not sure if he was down or if he's on top of the shields. Here's the third and goal play. May gonna sneak for it, and he will be called for the touchdown. So Carolina now has scored in 10 straight quarters against Pitt, and the Tar Heels take the opening drive of the second half and march for Drake May, second rushing score of the night. Think about what Drake did on that drive. You know, he hits the deep shot on the post. It's a play on a move and obviously able to get in for the sneak. Here's Noah Burnett to make it 35 to 17. Let's go back to this 52 yard throw Tim. Take us kind of through what this is. Get a bunch down to the bottom of the screen and he initially wanted to work an option route that was underneath and he sees Jones pop free down the middle of the field on the post. He kind of was clearing things out. He catches him. You kind of see his eyes catch him. He's able to quickly get set and then what's probably the most impressive part of that is that it then becomes a perfectly accurate ball. Mm. Like for a guy that's his size, sometimes big, tall, long quarterbacks, when they have to reset, they get wild with the football. It takes off on them, they're not accurate with it. That's not the case with him. For somebody that's his size, he's still able to be sudden, compact, and accurate. Yep. Well, Carolina trying to uh, stem a trend in this series where the home team had won each of the last four. Remember, they first met October 5th, 1974. Carolina with Bill Dooley beat John Majors in Pitt 45-29 at Keenan Stadium in a game where a guy named Tony Dorsett didn't have a great day against the Tar Heels. And it's been a terrific series through the history. And tonight, the Pitt-Carolina game of Thursday night 
in September 1982 at Three Rivers Stadium. Dan Marino pits preseason number one, number five, North Carolina. Mike Wilter, an early interception, leads to a Brooks Barwick field goal. It is 3-0 Carolina. Here's Pitt, though. Marino to Brian Thomas. It's the game's only touchdown, Tim. Rob Rogers would add a field goal, but Carolina's last threat is sniffed out by Pitt linebacker Rich Cranach. CBS's first college football telecast in 16 years ends in a 7-6 game at Three River Stadium. That's tonight's West of Peter. Well, listen, I did a couple things that one were towing the football and two, Dan Marino, quarterback, and you score one touchdown? What's going on? By the way, Dan Marino wore Adidas high top basketball shoes on the old turf at Three Rivers. Christian Veyer, as Taylor told you, is the quarterback here for this second half. Bill Jakovic is out after that collision involving Cedric Gray and Tayon Holloway toward the end of the first half. Second down and seven. First play was a run play. Bayer going to shoot one toward the middle of the field. That was for Bob Means, and Gray got a hand in the throw lane there. Bayer kind of knows that he hit, kind of has one there. Ball's kind of thrown, but thrown behind. And that's a pretty good job by Gray on a receiver working inside. Pitt hit their first three third downs of the night, but have been hitless in their last four. And now they find themselves with their backup quarterback in a known passing situation against a team that's been excellent at rushing the passer. Rucker and three single digits up on the defensive line for Carolina. That's Bartholomew in motion. Here comes Chiswick's pressure. Veyer as he hit as he throws. I think that was Gray that got to him. And it was offline all the way headed to the far sideline and Kanate Mumphy. So three and out goes Christian Veyer in his first possession. And you, know, you got to think, you know, after, you know, Gene Chizik basically first third down, known passing situation. You said it. You, you got Rucker and Amari Gaynor, two good pass rushers on the edge, and they bring pressure to get to the air. So here is Caleb Junko to punt it to Elijah Huzzy. Who has been a factor already tonight, including a 52 yard punt return for a touchdown? And this ball will take a pit bounce. Huzzy will let it roll toward the 20, and that's where Carolina's next drive will start. Tar Heels by 18 early in the third in Pittsburgh. Listen, after practice, they'd meet up, get lunch between classes. So while, yes, she is a teacher at that point, they were just two students trying to get through their college days, guys. Well, Ed McCollum's a terrific story. and. Great to hear about Brittany's journey as well. Here's Amari and Hampton stepping out of two tackles across the 40 to the 45. It'll be a 25 yard run. And don't forget, for 10 years, ESPN has supported the College Football Playoff Foundation, bringing the college football community together during Extra Yard for Teachers Week to celebrate and honor great teachers. Since its inception, the CFP Foundation has recognized over a half million educators. For more, follow at CFP. ExtraYard.com. We're going to take a timeout because there's an injured Panther, Okanlola, who had the sack earlier, shaken up on the play. We'll back to Pitt in a moment. It's time for football in front of a packed house on the work after the Hampton run. And Amari and Hampton now. 58 yards on 10 carries tonight with a touchdown. 26 yard run a moment ago. Longest of the day. And here's British Brooks. And he will break midfield into pit territory on first down. British Brooks, we did not see against Appalachian State a couple weeks ago, came back last week. 11 carries, 25 yards, and a touchdown. Tim, he had, this is 43rd career game tonight. Second down. Nearly 600 yards of rushing two years ago. Remember, he missed all last year? Two years ago. Regular season game with NC State. He was a thing in that uh, Friday night game. <laughs> He's part of just a really talented backfield. Yep. Here's a quick throw in the seam, rolling catch, and that's Kobe Pesor. And that's a great example of what I mean about a quarterback that's Drake May's size being able to play quickly. 
right? Pressure's coming, got an unblocked defender, being able to be compact and shoot the ball down the seam. Tar Heels again, moving it through the gearbox. Brooks a little start and stop. And he'll get to the line maybe a step more on Brandon George's play. So there's pressure coming from the top of the screen. Watch May just quickly reset, ball out, anticipate. And then also, you know, you say, hey, the ball's low. No, he's protecting Kobe Pesor from that safety in the middle of the field. And this Carolina offense, you know, it is year one with Chip Lindsey. I feel like they already do a lot really well. Mm. Powerful backs. I think you got an offensive line group that is getting better. They got tight ends that were willing to block, receivers that are improving. Here's Brooks trying to shake away from. That looked like Jules in the backfield. He did. Got a yard maybe to the 24. And Carolina tonight, not as dynamically different game in, game out as Pitt has been. Four different offensive lines in four games. Carolina's doing a little mixing and matching tonight because Willie Lampkin is not here. He, Gavin Blackwell, Elijah Green did not make the trip with the Tar Heels. See Copenhagen in the slot at the top. Here's May lobbing one for Jones and ball not catchable, thus no flag on the play against MJ, Devin, MJ Devonshire's coverage of JJ Jones. And I think because of the contact and you know, Devonshire and really all of the pit defenders play with a lot of physicality down the field, a lot of grabbing, pushing, and shoving. And because Jones got walled to the sideline so much, ball was high. I think had it been a little more playable, then maybe would have received a flag. Noah Burnett going to try one from right at about 43 yards. Last week he hit a 42 yarder against Minnesota. Burnett's kick is good. So we got a new score just under nine minutes to go, and Carolina's pushed the advantage now to three touchdowns. 38. To 17. Mac Brown's team has produced 10 points in their first two possessions of this second half and have now outscored Pitt 31 to 3 since trailing 14 to 7. And I think that is a great sign for Mac Brown's football team. You know, Mac talked about, you know, this not being able to be a trap game. I mean, he said to his team straight out, he said, look, you guys aren't good enough to have a trap game. I mean, it, he, he's like, look, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm telling you, you are not good enough to have a trap game. Now, we can get there. We can get to be that good, but you got to prove it first. And I think with how this game started, with Pitt really being able to run the football, this is a very impressive response by Carolina. Liam Boyd will kick it away. Kenny Johnson, there's the freshman from York, PA. And this is a high, relatively playable kick at the two. Johnson tries the far seam, heads to the far side, and here goes Kenny Johnson to the house. Nobody within 10 yards of him. 99 on the kick return for the Panther touchdown. Playable was a high kick. He hit the goal line. Honestly, picks up a few good blocks and then just uses his speed. And Kenny Johnson, who we've seen the speed on some runs tonight, see it there on the kickoff return. And a little charge into the Panther fans here at Acrisure. Point after by Sauls is good. 38-24. Carolina in front. Let's visit with Kelsey Riggs. Kelsey Riggs with this Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update and got to show you how it went down in the Georgia Tech Wake Forest game because Georgia Tech went on the road and absolutely went off. A 30 to 16 win for the Yellow Jackets. 
So it's now officially been marked as a 100 yard kickoff return for Kenny Johnson. So they threw the extra three feet on the fire for it. Can't be beat. Nope. Not at this level. And with 8.32 to go, we were just talking about responding. Carolina's going to have to do that because you never know. Momentum in this game, and it's only two scores. First Tar Heel opponent to run a kick back against Carolina in six years. Not since Old Dominion in 2017. DJ Jones and George Petaway deep, and no return coming. So Carolina back out there. Don't forget Tuesday night, nothing but net. Come center stage on ACC Network. Every ACC school's basketball schedule will be unveiled for the 23-24 season. The ladies start first, 7 o'clock. Two touchdown lead for May and the Tar Heels. Quick throw, and there's J.J. Jones again. He will fall forward for the first down. Boy, J.J. Jones can start to emerge, Tim. Three catches last week against Minnesota. That is three here tonight for 80 yards. And Chip Lindsey kind of perked up a little bit talking about him. You know, he had an ankle injury. You know, he kind of started to come on a little bit in the spring. And I think just from a physical standpoint, in terms of size and speed, probably do some things with him downfield. That's Copenhagen in motion. And the ball to Hampton. And boy, Marion bent back. That's Nick Lappy, the money backer from Upper Saddle River, River, New Jersey, making the stop. They got, for all the veteran guys, Tim, they got some young guys that they're excited. And Lappy would join Lovelace, who we spoke of earlier, and Kyle Lewis, a redshirt freshman we're seeing tonight on the field, too. Yeah, there's no question about it. And I think that kind of roll them in and done a decent job with the, the portal as well. Yep. Here's May throwing again for Jones and just beyond his reach incomplete. A.J. Woods was in coverage. Let's go downstairs. Chip when he got here in the spring, I really didn't know him because he was recovering from hip surgery in the offseason. But then he talked to his friend, uh, Todd Munkin, who's now the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. He recruited J.J. back in high school when he was in the college ranks. And he said, this kid's good. I really liked him back in college. And now you're going to start to see J.J. emerge. Maybe Todd Munkin was right, guys. Third down and eight. And a line shot. And that is caught Pesor. That'll be a first down at the 47-yard line. There are two thoughts about that J.J. Jones story from yesterday, Tim. One is Todd Munkin was in Georgia when J.J. Jones was coming out of high school at Myrtle Beach, right? And remember, he's in that same kind of grand strand football prep report that Adam Randall of Clemson was, right? Mm -hmm. Same kind of area. Todd Munkin at Georgia liked him. That might mean that he was pretty you know, talented player. Yeah. And now all of a sudden he comes to Carolina and it's a hip issue that is sidelined him. That's Hampton on the carry. David Green makes the stop for Pitt. But now healthy. And oh, by the way, we've gone this far in the night. They got to find somebody to take the take the inventory that was going to belong to Tez Walker in this thing. Yeah, there's no question about it. And so guys down the field and they got some freshmen that they're trying to work in to do that. But McCollum, I think, has proved that he can be the guy that works inside with pace or looking for somebody outside as well. Yep. Pressure coming. May moves to his right. Drake looks. Come back. What a catch. Toe tap inbounds. Yes. Ruled in. Who was it? Jones. At the 34 of the Panthers. And it's a great job of Jones of working for his quarterback because he was initially headed down the field. And I think he secures that football with his right foot down before that left one comes down. Carolina on the line. Ball got snapped. Here's May to his left. Tried to flip it to Nesbitt. Juggled it. And then he re racked and caught it, I believe. But a yard or two behind the line, maybe four, back to the 38 on McIntyre's coverage. Yeah, and this is a play they ran earlier with a lot of success, and Pitt's defending it better. So they're kind of running over the top of it with McIntyre. McIntyre got about a yard and a half of sod in his helmet. Or I should say Nesbitt, rather, not McIntyre. Might have to get a backhoe to get that out. Here's Hampton. Pass from May. 
Amari and Hampton back to the 35, almost the original line of the first down spot. McMillan the play. Drake May kind of coming out with the playbook now. 14 to 20, 249 tonight. Third and 11. Drake looks to that far side where the plays are signaled in. And now a pit timeout mm. with 444 Prior to, to snap. go. Timeout. timeout. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Their first of the half. 30 second timeout. So a break here on the pit timeout. And Drake May, I just gave you the numbers, Tim. We've seen everything, including the lefty pass. I mean, we've seen him run it in, seeing him on a flea flicker, be able to get the football out. That's with no laces, just get it and get it out there. A run that turned into a pass left-handed. Launch one down the middle of the field on a post. There really isn't anything this guy can't do playing quarterback, and he's only getting better. And Taylor, here's the thing. He's still not the biggest May on campus. Somebody else is the BMOC. He's not. We asked him when we saw him a couple of weeks ago, what's it like now that you have some pub walking around? Honestly, they're kind of scared of saying hi to you, but he said, when my brother Luke May is here during the summers, he spends his summers back on campus. Of course, won a national championship on the basketball court with the heels. He said, everyone asks Luke for a picture. No one really stops me. So while brother Drake may be a number one overall pick next year, uh, Luke is the one who still gets all the shine, guys. Catch by McCollum. He's knocked down at the 30 by A.J. Woods. Don't forget Cole. Won a College World Series with Florida as a pitcher. Bo played basketball in Carolina, and of course, Luke hit one of the biggest shots in the last decade of Carolina basketball history. He was funny saying, he's like, yeah, they ask uh, you know, Luke for his autograph, and they just kind of stare at me when I go to, go to class. 48-yard try here for Noah Burnett. Carolina can add back to it. Kick is away from Burnett, and it is good. 41-24 now the score. So Burnett has ended Carolina's last two possessions with field goals of 43 and 48. And with 3.58 to play here in quarter number three, Tar Heel lead goes back to 17. Now remember, Ryan Coe was the kicker a couple weeks ago when we were in Chapel Hill. He's on the shelf for the time being, so Noah Burnett who had some struggles at the end of last year, particularly in the final regular season game of the year against NC State, has uh, kind of responded to the task here in the last week or so. And we've seen some kicking struggles from some teams in wow. this conference. And you know, I think that there was probably a little bit of uneasiness for Mac Brown, just wondering what it would look like. And it's been a, it's been a good operation for them tonight. It's a career long, by the way, for Burnett by a yard. He had a 47-yarder a year ago at Boone in that wild game against Appalachian State at Kid Brewer Stadium. High short kick, nowhere near Kenny Johnson. Oh, my goodness, ball loose. Collision of the play at the 35 between two Panthers, including Bartholomew. And I believe Pitt has fallen on the ball here, and they have. Panthers are going to have it at the 36 out of all that. They're trying to prevent a return, so you sky kick it. Not good communication between Crumpley and Bartholomew, and because of that, ball comes loose, and I believe it's Crumpley who just continues to fight for the football and is able to gather it before the Tar Heel coverage team can get there. I think that was Stick Lane that overshot the landing for Carolina to give him a chance to maybe pull it away instead. Pitt will have their second offensive possession with Christian Vayer at the 36 yard line. And they're going to flip it to Johnson trying to get to the perimeter. Here comes the rookie again. And he'll be helped out of bounds by Geo Biggers across the way at the 43. How about Pitt? Hey, 
you're not going to kick it off to him. We're going to give it to him on a reverse. The first offensive snap. Look, Bob Means does not have a catch tonight, Tim. Remember, he didn't have a catch two weeks ago against Cincinnati. Last week, had two catches for 25 yards. He's an electric player, but somehow it's it's just not connecting. So you got to find somebody else to replicate what he does. Johnson's the closest thing I think you have to him. And here is Rodney Hammond racing into the secondary before Elijah Huzzy and Biggers finally corral him along with Stick Lane, the grad transfer from Georgia State. Another one of those wind back runs where kind of get it going to the right, wind it back to the left, and just a huge hole for Rodney Hammond Jr. to run through. Under three now. Hammond, who was really impacting this game in the first two offensive possessions of the night for the Panthers, trying now to see if they can't respond to the Tar Heel field goal. They air hands to Hammond again. And he got knocked down. Lane and Tavius Stick Lane. He had 35 games in Atlanta for Georgia State. 221 tackles and 11 interceptions in his career with the Panthers. Gene Chizik was talking about getting him more reps, and it's happening tonight. Well, I think the secondary is the area where they, they probably need to play more guys to rest guys and, and also create a little more competition. And movement, I think, on Pitt's offensive line. Stuart Mullins will tell us about it. Full start. Full start. Offense, number eight. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Carter Johnson, the big tight end at nearly 260 pounds. Penalty backs them to the 40, where it's now second down. And the clock running here. Under two to go. You see seventh penalty of the night against Pitt for 53 yards. Carolina twice for 24. Bayers come in. One of his first three for 15 yards. And going to throw here. Pressure coming. Hit as he goes. Atkinson clobbered him. And it's intercepted. Elijah Hussey. Hussey who had 12 picks. For East Tennessee State now has his first as a Tar Heel. Bo Atkinson gets all kinds of pressure, gets a hit on Bayer, who really just launches this one up to the middle of the field. And Elijah Huzzy, who Gene Chizik really raved about to us. And honestly, Mac Brown did the same thing, saying he's been everything that we thought that he would be since arriving on campus. It's just a matter of time, probably before he gets his hands on the football, and he's done an excellent job of it tonight. So Huzzy's had a 52-yard punt return, and now an interception. And honestly, the game we had a few weeks ago against App State. I know where you're going. He makes the last three plays of the game. Yeah. Here's the punt return. Well, this is his punt return. This is the first one. This is that the he, first one. That he takes off to the right, and the next one starts off looking like that. And he cuts it back the other way. And you know, it was interesting just thinking back in the conversation with Gene Chizik. He said he's a good football player. Well, like, hey, he's a good corner. He's like, hey, this guy's a good football player. Honey baked ham company playmaker of the game, Elijah Hussey. Two punt returns in the first half, a touchdown included, and now his first Tar Heel interception. And it was ruled, by the way, in the, in the midst of talking about that, that Huzzy intercepted the ball and hit the ground. So Carolina starts the drive off the two. Rather than the 20, which would have been, had it been ruled into the end zone, it would have been a touchback to the 20. Instead, it is ruled to the two. And they pick up four there on the little swing pass. Minute to go in the third. May looking for Jones. And it is a catch in front of the pit bench and a first down out to the 22. A.J. Woods there in coverage for Pitt. And J.J. Jones is having a night. Yeah, and, I, and that's basically an impossible to defend play. 
You don't get over the top. Back shoulder throw by Drake May. It's great coverage. But you just stick him back shoulder with the football. There's not much you can do. And it's a Saturday catch, kids, not a Sunday catch. But it works tonight. And that could be the final play of the first. Tyler Bentley, the tackle on Amari and Hampton. Trying to go to 4 0. Pittsburgh trying to snap a two game skid. Tar Heels with a 17 point lead. And Drake May in trouble, and DeAndre Jules is going to sock it. So May will be down third time tonight, fourth time tonight he's been sacked. Second time we've had Big Zero involved in it for the Panthers. Yeah, that's just a good move by Jules, just an inside move. What a bit of a swim move. And he says Spencer Rollins just really has no shot. Back isn't there to help him out, and Drake May, who said he'd been hit a few times, and now has a third and forever. This is third down and 17. Quick throw here's McCollum trying to find a seam. And he'll advance it out to about the 22 yard line. That'll make it fourth down and 10. Shane Simon, the linebacker in ball. This will be the fifth play of the drive and a punt coming for Ben Kiernan. NJ Devonshire retreats for Pitt as the single safety. have recovered at the 20. Braylon Lovelace is kind of at the bottom of the stack on the recovery, I believe. Rasheem Biles, a freshman linebacker from Pickerington, Ohio, blocked it. So a kick return and now a punt block won't make Mac Brown happy. It's a bit of this kind of half roll kick and you know, just not aggressive enough up front. Because of that, Biles able to just, I think he gets it off his face mask. Wow. On the doorstep, they air at the Carolina 20 with Pitt's third offensive possession. And he fumbles the ball right back to Carolina. And Cedric Gray, the recovery on the botched exchange between Veyer and Kenny Johnson. And I think they're trying to fake it to Kenny Johnson. I don't believe this is something that they're reading after they've given it to Johnson a few times. I think it's Veyer is trying to keep this football. Going to take it in and follow Collier, the right guard, and all just on the turf. And Carolina gets it right back. At its 17 yard line. Second turnover in the second half, second consecutive possession to end in a turnover for Pitt. And Drake May, who's 18 of 24 tonight for 281 and a touchdown, he's got two on the ground, has British Brooks with it. Pitt brings four. May loads and cannot get it to McCollum. And Javon McIntyre in coverage, and here's a flag thrown. And McCollum's running a corner route, and he's getting held. And this is the second time tonight, I feel like there's been a P.I. Stuart Mullins. Proud of the pass. Holding. Defense, number seven. Ten-yard penalty with an automatic. First down. I just see the reach out and grab. I mean, McCollum's looking for it right away. And but I feel like the, the, the flag has come from the wrong official. Yeah. That one's from 30 yards away, the official in the middle of the field. The one earlier in the middle of the field came from the sideline. Here's May, and this is McCollum again, trying to get a full head of steam around the corner. And he will pick up right at about five to the 32. We'll see, is that going to be, that's a pass to McCollum. So that will give May right at 
286 yards on 25 completions. Or 25 attempts, 19 completions. Remember, he had last week a 400 yard game, 414 on 29 of 40. And this time, Brooks and Shane Simon, a terrific play. The linebacker for Pitt fighting into the backfield, shed the block. Was that Morales trying to stop Simon? It was, you know, it was pressure backside for Drake Mays who rolled out and really just tried to get rid of the football, which right. is a throw it to Brooks who wasn't exactly open. Now they're trying to go fast on a known passing third down situation. You see the single receiver to the top. That's Jones who's got a career high night going. And in the middle of the field, this is Nesbitt for the first down. That was a great example of using a double cadence. You've been going fast on third down. Use double cadence to get a sense of what the defense is doing. They're bringing a zone pressure. When they do that, there's a void for Nesbitt right there. Drake May sees it, balls out. That's perfectly done. First down and 10, ball at the 41. And the run game with Brooks. Not much there. David Green to stop. Another look at the throw to Nesbitt here. He's a good example. He's going to go through a double cadence. He sees nine coming off the slot here. And because of that, there's going to be a void because it's a zone pressure and they're pushing to it. So he sees it, gets the information. Let's go like reading your mail. Like I'm reading your mail on the initial count to then know exactly what's happening once I do snap the football. See Andre Green, number one, bottom of the screen. First time we've seen him in the fray tonight from a receiving standpoint. They throw it to Green, who can't hang on. Would have been May's 22nd completion of the night. Tim, how high level is that for Drake May? See, th that's big because when you get to the NFL, everything's packaged. Everything's a double cadence. Everything is, like, especially when you get to third down, there are no carry plays. Call in, run it. CAR. There are, the, you don't do that in the pros. You, you're trying to get a look because everything's so complex. You're trying to see it. That's just an example, of, of like one small example to see it to know how it can translate for him at the next level. Third down, May dancing, trying to get away from some pressure, and he's just going to go down. And that's Simon again. Be another sack. Fifth of the night for Pitt. And Carolina will punt it away here with 10 and a half to go up 17. And see JJ Jones not happy. He's having a great night. Six catches for 117 for JJ Jones. And you saw Carolina after the kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, we're doing it differently now. We're not kicking to him. Well, now, you know, after what happened the last punt, see if they go with a different approach rather than that half roll. Yep. Karen and Waits, a little step to the right. Panthers were there. Devonshire going to come up and make the play at the 27. Now try and haul off here for the near side. There's a flag down. MJ turns the corner at midfield and helped out of bounds. Elijah Hussey, who's done everything but hand out soft drinks tonight. Seemingly helped him out of bounds right around the 49, but Stuart Mullins in a marker near the return spot. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. That'll negate the return by Devonshire and take us to a timeout. Tar Heels by 17, Bay Air and the Panthers. Fuller. They can come to. Dog friendly show. They're in the basement, right? Let's go. All dogs are welcome. Cats, too. Packs, packs dogs are there all the time. Dejon Reynolds, the catch. Mitch needs to come along one day. See Mitch on the show. Clifford used to come by every once in a while when, you know, we had a show there. My cat would roll through once in a while, maybe twice. No. Here's Pitt now. First down after the throw to Reynolds. Bayer deflected. Did Huzzy get a pick? No, incomplete. incomplete. <laughs> Tim? That would have been something because he's had a remarkable night. Power Echoes kind of there in the initial coverage. That ball's thrown into traffic by 
the air. He's, there's Eccles inside. He's trying to throw an inside slant. Dangerous. And oh. Clearly, the ball hits the ground, but. Hey, what power Eccles make one of Hubert Davis's post players defending the block on the pass, on the entry pass. Second down, two. Pitt narrowly avoided their third straight turnover in as many possessions. There's a slant Mumfield to catch and just avoids the play of Will Hardy, who got just enough to get Kanate Mumfield on the ground at the 41. Well, Gene Chizik gave us a number yesterday. We wanted to see if he could get to 20, right? 19, 20. I was say we'd like to play 24 players yeah. on defense. And you know, last year I think there were times that they were playing Ooh. in the mid-teens in terms of players that were getting on the field. And there's a throw, and there's Bob Means first catch of the night. And it's a four-yard throw to the 45. Power Eccles makes the stop. And Bob Means just his fifth catch of the year. To give you an idea, a season ago he had 27 catches, two touchdowns, averaged 15 yards a catch. Started his career at the Louisiana Tech. There's a throw incomplete, looking to go to Reynolds again. Dejan, the transfer from Florida. And you can kind of see that we're really only comfortable with the quick game right now with the air. Mm. The, the, Kind of catch ball out, hitch, hits means on a little arrow route for about four yards. I mean, there maybe it's because of you know the mistake a little bit earlier on the ball down the field. Third down. They are on a straight drop. Carolina bringing four. Back foot throw downfield and incomplete. Don Chapman, the closest guy to the football. The Carolina safety, Cedric Gray. Led the parade, and we've got an injured pit player down. And is that Rodney Hammond? Yes, it is. That's that's one pit cannot afford here tonight. Losing Phil Jakovic his own power um, in a 17-point game with about eight minutes to go. Christian Veyer back out there. It is fourth down, and Pitt. We'll go for it. Sebo Flemister, by the way, has spelled Hammond. You see Bartholomew out there along with Reynolds. Pitt has missed their last five third down tries. Remember, they hit three of them in their first possession tonight. Panthers facing fourth down and six. And with 8.13 to go down 17. Here's Bayer looking, and Flemister dropped it. Hit him in the hands and right in front of Marcus Allen, the sophomore corner from Walton High School in Marietta, Georgia, who was on the defensive end for Carolina. So Pitt's last three possessions, Tim. This is cashed out on downs, a fumble, and an interception. Really, they have a decent call. Got a slam run by Flemingster. He gets inside. Good accurate throw, just not caught. And yeah, some of the struggles that we saw earlier in the season where, you know, it just wasn't one thing. You know, Djokovic was struggling, but it wasn't just that. And the thing that was the point that was made was that everybody else around the quarterback could step up and play a little bit better. And it felt like they were the beginning portion of this football game. May going to hand the ball to Hampton and look at that collision. Solomon DeShields, the star backer, wrestles Amari and Hampton to the ground after a yard. Tell you this, Randy Bates' defense still bringing it. And I feel like they have all year. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, their numbers coming in were really good when you look at kind of the rankings. Now, some of them, you know, they were first in total defense, first against the pass, fifth in scoring, seventh against the run. And looking because of some of the turnovers, they've had to, you know, some sudden change opportunities, and that's not easy for a defense. And into a stack went Hampton there. And a loss of one on the play. So here is third down in the full 10 coming for Carolina. And Carolina swaps tight ends. Copenhaver out. Nesbitt, who is, I'm going to argue that Nesbitt is becoming more of a wide receiver than a tight end, Tim. You know, it feels like it. And I think part of it is Copenhaver. 
has been so good in the run game yeah. that I feel like he's kind of earned some time to be out on the field and you know, different skill set for Nesbitt. That's Nesbitt kind of as a wing back on the left. They're going to hand to Hampton and boy Pitt shut the door. David Green, who shaken up earlier in the half, makes a shoot top tackle and Pitt's going to call a timeout here with 6:37 to go. Brandon George, he's been a factor tonight, the linebacking spot as well. Pitt will have one left in the final 6:37. How about before we get the punt here? Here's tonight's Bojangles Big Bow moment. Listen, I know throwing something left hand is no big deal for you, Wes. Because <laughs> I am left handed. But when it's Drake May who does most of his work throwing right handed, how about the, the left handed throw and a little bit of that Patrick Mahomes move of like, hey, staring it down, like, yeah, just so we're clear. I threw that lefty. Kern, Kiernan's coming on to punt. <laughs> think he might punt it left footed? What do we think? Here is Kiernan to punt. MJ Devonshire drops back for Pitt. I still am like, wow. Here's Kiernan trying to hang it up inside the numbers and the sideline. Devonshire, fair catch just inside the 10. Okay, now here's the angle that might be the best, right? Watch the kid in the hoodie near the official on the back pylon after the catch by Pesor. Holy cow, did you just see that? <laughs> Finally tackled by Stick Lane at the Carolina 49 yard line. Fourth first down of the second half for the Panthers. Pitt refusing to go away quietly. Yep. Bayer, you know, to get off, you know, kind of being backed up. Does a good job on the escape. Best throw of the night for the young man from Canada. Now lobbing one deep and well overthrows Means. You go to Christian Veyer's dossier, you got to go back to a 2021 game when he was at Penn State against Rutgers. He came off the bench, was 15-24, 235, and three touchdowns. So he's got the talent. It's a pretty good throw on the move. Second and 10 after the miss of Means there. You see 5 of 13 tonight. From the 15. After second down, two. coming in to replace Jerkovic. Here's a second down throw, looping it downfield and trying to get to Reynolds. It'll be incomplete, Tyler. Yeah, when we talked to head coach Pat Narduzzi this week about Christian Bayer, he said his spiral, it's really perfect, but sometimes it's almost too fast. Touch is something he could probably work on, but he's athletic and he is talented. The operation of the offense, he does admit, is still a little bit new. Sometimes he can be fidgety in the pocket, unlike Phil, who's a little bit more calm and will take those hits. But he has gotten better since spring, and we're seeing it on display now, forced into competition, guys. Well, and here's the element about Christian Veyer. We do not know any of the details to the injury that Phil Jakovic sustained other than that he is out tonight. That ball almost thrown pass dead on Canada. to Tamari Fox. <laughs> but it's incomplete. Tim, you and uh, Mike Monaco who will be with you next Saturday night in Blacksburg could be seeing Kyron Drones and Christian Veyer at quarterback backups for both schools next Saturday. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the hit on Dracovic at the end of the half was ugly. And we don't know the details, but he got bent back and obviously was not good enough to come out and play in the second half. And so with that, with seeing Drones play today for Virginia Tech, could be a likely scenario. Yeah, I got movement from Rucker, but was he drawn by Branson Taylor? Full start. He was. Offense, number 78. Five yard penalty, fourth down. So again on fourth down, Pittsburgh will go for it with 540 to go. The Panthers will be in Blacksburg. Carolina is going to get a week off. 
from the 45. And they will wait on Syracuse, who comes to Chapel Hill on October 7th. First meeting between the two schools since they opened the 2020 season. Here is Vayer moving to his left and guns it complete to Means. What a catch by Means, but Vayer was ahead of the line of scrimmage. And that's a loss of down. Lost his spot on the field. He definitely, I'm thinking, I'm watching him, I mean, he's way over the line. I'm thinking there's no shot that he's going to continue to throw this. And, does a good job of trying to buy some time. Forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage. Offense number 11. Five yard penalty from the spot of foul. And a loss of down. First down, North Carolina. Timeout. So there we go. 523 to go. Carolina in plus territory when we continue. 33, they'll have full coverage. Here's a little toss, and that's McCollum. In front of the pit bench and runs right into PJ O'Brien and others. Oh, was that a pass? A little touch pass. Might get him to 300. Might get him to 300. It didn't though. He only got a yard. 296 now for May. This is Carolina's seventh possession of the second half. Pitts only had five, two turnovers and two giveaways on downs in their last four. Of course, they had the punt return by Johnson. And this is going to be Hampton to the right side. And the clock continues to move toward four and a half. What a day it's been in the ACC, Tim. Clemson, Florida State delivered, huh? That was a great game. And, and honestly, another good performance by Clemson. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, Florida State to go in there and get a win. Yep. And you could tell Jordan Travis was fighting through that shoulder injury that that happened in the BC game. I guess two weeks ago, I guess last week now, and yeah. um, well, the defense for Florida State really answered the bell. No question about that. Here is Hampton now to the left side. And Shane Simon will track him to the 38. So it'll be fourth down and about five. Or third down and about five, I should say. No, fourth, right. And a timeout taken by Pitt, their last one. Uh, other winners today in conference play. Louisville scored touchdowns on their first seven possessions, put 56 on the board, beating Boston College. Um, Georgia Tech and Brent Key go to two and two. And pick up a road win in Winston-Salem. 30 to 16 is the final. Haynes a long touchdown run to seal it for the Jackets who are now level or one and one in conference play. Remember they opened with Louisville to start the season and they get uh, Bowling Green next Saturday before going to Miami who blasted Temple today yeah. in Philly. So you think about to get to get into October. Feel like you're playing pretty good football. It's going to be a different feeling for Georgia Tech. Yeah. And say this. Wake Forest is always a hard team to beat. They're well coached. They are creative on offense. They, they have a, a coach that I think manages the game extremely well. And that's impressive yeah. to go to Winston-Salem and get a win. And Haynes King is emerging as a quarterbacking factor in the ACC in his first year after transferring from Texas A&M. Carolina on fourth and five. May going to throw. And Nesbitt slipped on the play. Couldn't get back to his feet. And Carolina will give it away on downs. So with 345 to go, it's a 17 point game and Pitt will get it back at its 38. And Drake May is a competitor, if nothing else, and I don't think he's particularly happy with the way this thing's coming to an end for him. He's going to like the win, of course. But uh, Maybe not as clean as he'd like for it to be in the last couple possessions. No, not at all. And, you know, it's like they'll come away with a win here. But there's also some things, especially in the special teams portion of the game, that I'm sure they'll want to get cleaned up. Yep. Here's Bayer dropping straight back on the perimeter. And, ooh, what a good hit that was. Flemister the catch. 
And the Carolina tackle was made by Mari Campbell, true freshman from Manassas, Virginia. Enrolled in January, had four plays last week. Gene Chiswick was like, we got to get him some more run. And he's getting it tonight. There, another throw to the sideline. Means will step out of bounds at the 41. It'll be third down and right at about seven. I think it's an important thing here. You talk about Amari Campbell, he just mentioned. Sebastian Cheeks. Hmm. Two inside backers. It's important for those guys to get snaps because Cedric Gray and Power Eccles basically play every defensive snap. And Tamari Fox, who missed all of last year, might have moved early here and did. He will come out and Javari Ritchie Outside. will replace With him. Contact. Defense number zero. Five yard penalty. Third down. I was trying to uh, count the number tonight as Gene Chiswick was talking to us yesterday. And he wanted to play what six or seven in the front. Maybe eight if he could. And here's Flemister. He will pick up the first down one after three, the penalty. Under three minutes to go. Probably seeing one two three Amari Campbell would have made five. So that's 13 plus the secondary tie where we've seen seven or eight Tim that's right yeah. at 20 21. Maybe 22 here's Rucker and Vayer will go down back at the 40 second sack of the night for Cayman Rucker. And how about how Cayman Rucker has come on. Yeah. With Gene Chiswick. You know, he kind of was a player without a home for a little bit in terms of he's an undersized defensive end. He was not a highly recruited player, but basically become a self made player. And Gene Chiswick has found a way to use him, kind of this stand up outside linebacker defensive end hybrid. There's an interception. Elijah Huzzy's got another, and trying to get ballet service, he'll be tripped up. He was trying to get a little help to the end zone and the Panthers knock him out of bounds and Elijah Huzzy's come away with a multi interception game tonight and a punt return for a touchdown. And he was the only one in the vicinity of this football. Now, I don't know that there was a pit receiver within five yards of where Huzzy was. Yep. Drake May will come out. But Elijah Huzzy Taylor having a heck of a night. Told me about when I talked to Kobe Pesor, I, I, he told me about who is the best guy in the secondary that challenges you the most at practice, and he easily answered Elijah Huzzy. He said he loves how he plays, he's aggressive, and he's not going to let me get open unless I have to work for it. He admits that sometimes he does get the best of him, but there is healthy competition during the week, and you're seeing it translate out on the field here tonight. Well, Carolina's in to take a knee now with 100 seconds to go, and Tim Mack Brown's going to get his 4 0 for the first time since 97. And I think that some of that serious talk about where this football team was, I think it was received. I, you know, it kind of got, took a punch beginning part of this football game, and I think they matched the physicality that Pitt came at them with. Yeah. Early score by the Panthers. Boy, you hope Phil Dracovic's not too bad, right? He got off. He had a nice ball game here tonight. He got off to a great start. Three for three on that first drive. I thought that made some good throws with some pressure in his face. And Pitt's going to need him to be healthy. Going to need him to make some of those plays yeah. under pressure like we've seen him make. Yep. The Panthers are going to go to one and three. They'll lose their first ACC game here tonight. They've lost three straight. Their last three game losing streak was when they lost four, and that was in 2020. And tonight, Drake May rolls for 296 on 22 of 30. Elijah Huzzy has a night, two interceptions, a punt return for a touchdown. And North Carolina is a 41 24 winner tonight here against Pitt. And the final score yeah, I think as you, you've said a few times, Wes, you know, what do you learn about your football team in some of these contests? And, you know, sometimes they're still unknowns, but I think once again tonight, what you saw was 
A group of guys on offense getting a little bit more comfortable in Chip Lindsey's system. Quarterback playing well, still physical running the football. And I thought defensively, some good adjustments by Gene Chizik's side of the football. Well, North Carolina gets a week off before Syracuse calls Keenan Stadium on October the 7th. Pitt is in Blacksburg next Saturday night to see Virginia Tech, and Taylor is with Drake May. Yeah, Drake May. 